In a year many would rather forget, there have been a number of remembrances, flyovers and other events marking the end of World War II 75 years ago. As war hero and former Senator Bob Dole put it, the accomplishments of the greatest generation are too valuable to forget. Michael Schlesinger discovered that includes a powerful on the home front exhibit recognizing Wisconsin's contributions to the war effort. This highlights the incredible amount of manufacturing and work the, the people behind the story, the women in manufacturing, African Americans in manufacturing, the men and women who stepped up and just did an incredible work in this area to support the war effort and victory 75 years ago. Dan Buttery is CEO of the War Memorial Center, but with this temporary display in the Freedom Gallery, his role is more like curator. He helped turn the exhibit called On the Homefront into a reality. This compilation from various public and private donors demonstrates Milwaukee's role in World War II when it came to industrial ingenuity. It was just as much as putting on a uniform when they strapped down those work boots and went to Alice Chalmers or Bucyrus Erie. They were literally going and fighting the war. You just heard the company Alice Chalmers mention used to be right here at the corner of Washington and 70th here in West Dallas. Obviously the building has gone, but its legacy in relation to World War II stay strong all these years later. One of the significant contributions of Milwaukee industry during the course of the war was the production of turbo superchargers. You can see the device located in the back here. They were manufactured by Ellis Chalmers. They made an incredible 100,000 of these devices during the course of the war. And the factory was staffed almost entirely by women. You can see this, this photograph obviously was posed, but two women working on this uh, turbo supercharger, what it was used for was to provide American air superiority. Author and history buff Tom Faring played a big part in making the content in this 1500 square foot space a reality. He actually wrote a book to coincide with the exhibit. I think unity kind of sums it up the way everybody came together. There was a lot of hardship. You know, just, uh, you know, certainly all of those that were drafted or volunteered and served and, and that sort of stuff. And, People concentrate on that a lot, but they forget all of the other Milwaukeeans. There were 200,000 Milwaukeeans that uh, worked in factories and in various other roles. A lot of these Milwaukee companies, these old line Milwaukee companies, were pretty much co-located. You know, they, they worked together. And uh, like during the war effort, um, you know, there are companies like Heil that made uh, truck beds and, and the like for uh, fueling equipment to fuel airplanes and the like. Well, they needed other equipment. You know, they needed engines, so they would buy engines from Milwaukee Motors or for Waukesha Motors. For Faring, a lot of this resonates close to home as he explains these two Harley bikes used in the Army and Navy. During the Second World War, you know, my, my father initially was had a job at Harley Davidson, um, was a, employed for a while there, but when the war exactly, you know, started, and, and he began service, serving in the war, he worked in the military police. So he spent, uh, I believe, about four years, most of it in Australia, part of it in the Philippines, and being a military policeman, he rode a Harley Davidson motorcycle. There were so many lesser known businesses with just as great an impact. There was a company called A.B. Zuckert. Um, I knew nothing about them. And they made raincoats in the war, which were very, very important. There was a little company called JF Speaker. They made over five million of these things. These, these are little can openers, you know, so you get, you get uh, K rations. In order to open the cans, use this little device. I'm told Milwaukee really positioned itself to be an important player during this unsettling time for our country and the world. Of course, easy access to shipping and the railways was a big advantage for us and our allies. One of the largest um, areas and, and the fact that it was in the Midwest, it was protected, if you will. And in the midst of this giant history lesson, you begin to understand how history can repeat itself. Take, for instance, Jockey International out of Kenosha. We have a, a pair of jockey undergarments here. And the reason why I learned about them is during World War II, they repurposed to make parachutes. During COVID, they repurposed to make and be able to execute and make more masks in a rapid basis. So there's a continuity of what was happening 75 years ago and this year. And so that's what I thought was just fascinating is the ability of our community, of our society, and our organizations, our corporations um, 
when they put their mind to it, there's no stopping them to, to help with a greater, in this case, the pandemic. Not only do you have the human element, but you have the engineering side and the functionality side. And, uh, and the biggest takeaway I, we would want everybody to understand is just having that aha moment. Just come through and uh, there may be one or two things that you see and say, I had no idea. In fact, I heard you say that, Michael. You're like, I had no idea. And it's, it's a cool thing. I mean, we should always be learning something every day, hopefully. And this is what we'd love to do.